next guest is a sports journalist. She's a legend, a writer, podcast host, producer, and she's adding author to her name. Jamel Hill holds nothing back in her new memoir. It's called Uphill, which hits the store, uh, store shelves this week. And tonight you can see her in person at Politics and Prose in Northwest this morning. She is here live to talk about the book, the career, and more. Good morning to you. Good to see you, as always. Appreciate you coming in. So let's, let's talk about your book. First of all, it, it gets deep. It gets mm -hmm. deep. And you said, I love the quote you told me when I told you I was reading, and yeah. I got all the way to a very controversial section, but you said it gets lighter toward the end. It gets lighter towards the end. Yeah. Very heavy at the beginning, yes. and then you ease up to once you get toward the end. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So let's talk about the beginning. Um, I didn't know this, but uh, you came from a troubled uh, home, a troubled childhood, and you were talking about how you used to see your mother and the drugs mm -hmm. and how that, uh, how that affected you uh, mentally and how you were able to overcome all that. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people who are the children of addicts can kind of relate to a lot of the things I'm talking about where you're navigating around the abuse, um, uh, their drug abuse, their drug addiction, mm -hmm. and just having to deal with um, some very heavy issues as a child. You know, my mother um, was a sexual abuse survivor. And mm -hmm. so, uh, unfortunately, because of that, she was suffering from a very acute case of PTSD. But then, you know, you guys were talking about the 80s. In the 80s, right. people, that term wasn't, you know, thrown around as widely as it is right. now. And even in our community, in the black community, the idea of, of seeking therapy mm -hmm. was just relatively unknown or unheard of. So it just went untreated for a long time. And she self-medicated. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, I had to witness her at some of her lowest moments. Mm -hmm. When, it when you talk about your career, you were able to, to navigate all of that, navigate a troubled childhood and go through your career and making some decisions about where you're going to go next. Mm -hmm. and, and eventually you ended up uh, at, at ESPN. And uh, in your book, you said, uh, like every sports person's dream is to end up yeah. at ESPN. And you were one of those people. It was fun for a while. <laughs> it's fun while it lasted. While it lasted. <laughs> yeah. But there was drama there. Yeah. Uh, speak to, uh, I don't want to give the whole book away, but talk a little bit about the drama that went along, especially when you criticized then-President Donald Trump, uh, like all hell broke loose. Yeah, it did. I mean, I was at ESPN for 12 years. It was the best job that I've ever had. And uh, I spent the last five years uh, doing daily television. Mm -hmm. And, of course, when I'm on SportsCenter, one of the most high-profile positions you could be on, SportsCenter is ESPN's baby. And that was when I tweeted about the president. I called him a white supremacist. And never did I expect after that tweet that it would make its way to the White House. Because mm -hmm. next thing I know, uh, former press secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders is on national TV telling people I should be fired. And then the president chimed in. And so it just kind of blew my life up. And I mm -hmm. talk about uh, a lot in the book about what the fallout from right. that because at like, one point you said you need you thought you needed security because you didn't feel safe oh, because not, not thought did, uh, did. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> okay, not thought definitely yeah. did because of the constant death threats and um you know just feeling uneasy in public because of the type of people that the former president tends to attract like there's mm -hmm. there are very rabid um people that follow him and when you criticize him suddenly all of that rabidness is turned onto you. Mm -hmm. And it led to your de demise, somewhat to your demise at ESPN, but you, mo you moved past that and you moved on to, to other things as well. Yeah, I mean, what I would say would happen was that once there was sort of a, a, a breach in trust between mm -hmm. me and ESPN, because uh, I was very disappointed that when he did publicly attack me, the former president, that they didn't stand up for me. Mm -hmm. And coming from a kind of an old school journalistic background, when City Hall comes after your journalist, you stand with your journalist. Mm -hmm. Like that's the way news organizations should operate. And when they didn't do that, that just kind of let me know that you know, we had a good run, but maybe my time is up. And so I willingly chose to leave there because there were other things that I wanted to pursue. I'd done everything at ESPN mm -hmm. by that point. You know, I anchored Sports Center, I had my own daily sports discussion show, uh, podcasting, writing, sideline reporting. There was nothing left for me to do. Right. You moved on and you're doing a lot of different things mm -hmm. right now. Speak to some of those lot of different things you've done because your plate is full and it's, it's, and it's been full. full ever since then. Yeah, it's like I often joke that I traded in one job for 52 jobs. <laughs> and so really excited about some of the things I have coming up next week uh, on Spotify, um, my podcast network, the mm -hmm. first two podcasts that we have that they drop, uh, uh, The Black Girl Bravado mm -hmm. and uh, another podcast called Sanctified. And this is a passion project for me. Uh, I created this podcast network for black women that centers black women that hopefully will show the fullness of who 
we are, how we laugh, how we love, how we worship, and um, also is black woman led. Mm -hmm. And so I'm really excited that that's launching next week. And then I'm also executive producing Colin Kaepernick's 30 for 30 documentary, which, which, Spike is, Lee. which is directed right. by Spike Lee. So yeah. we were already in production. And I think people will really, well, one, I think once this is done, a lot of people, they already do now owe Colin Kaepernick an apology. But mm -hmm. when you put his story together and people right. can see visually and hear from him what he experienced, what he's been through, a lot of a lot more people will feel embarrassed and ashamed for mm -hmm. how they vilified this man. Right. OK. Jamel Hill. She's a, she's got it going on. She has a lot going on, including this book right here. You can pick it up everywhere. Right? Yes. Everywhere books are sold. Everything. And yes, there is an audio recording. Y'all always ask me. <laughs> yeah, A lot of people don't want to read. They just want to listen. <laughs> exactly. So here we get. And there's your, some information about your upcoming book tour schedule. So we appreciate you joining us this morning. So thank you, Jamel Hill. All right. Thank you for your time this Thank morning. Thank you. Oh, we also got to get you to talk about Jackson State and Coach Prime. Oh, there's my Jackson State. There Jackson, there's there. my Jackson State mentioned for the week yes. on a Friday.